YouTube Frongs, welcome back to another prep video. 2.4 has unloaded a triple rerun banner, and to start us off, in the first half, we have Xiao making his first appearance in 10 months since 1.3. In this video, I'll be covering some general preparation tips and frequently asked questions for Xiao to help jumpstart your investment before his banner returns. Those of you who already own Xiao but are looking to potentially grab an early constellation, I'll go over whether or not it's really worth as well. And as a small reminder, I stream nearly every day on Twitch if you want to check me out there. Link in the description. Let's begin. First off, a quick section on his material prep. Don't be fooled by his animal element when farming for boss materials. His material usage is unique in that the boss used to farm for his core material does not actually drop animal ascension shards. So if you aren't prepared, you'll likely need to convert some of your other shards with the Azoth dust. For level 80 and level 90, you'll need 26 to 46 juvenile jade boss materials from the Primo Geo Bishop, 108 to 168 Qingqing flowers, around 30 of each slime condensate, and 300 to 420k mora. For talent materials, about 20 more of each slime condensate, Liyue Prosperity talent books, and these Shadow of the Warrior bulb looking things from the Tartak Weekly for level 7 and higher. I would say that cost efficient investment stops at 80 out of 80. Ascending to 80 out of 90 is worth for the crit rate increase, and leveling to 90 out of 90 is extra investment and only provides 24 base attack, which is around a 3-4% DPS increase. For talent leveling priority, I would recommend focusing on the normal attack first, and then into the elemental burst, and then elemental skill. He is an animal plunge damage focused character with an animal infusion and a normal charge plunging damage buff from his burst. His elemental skill is mainly used to traverse the overworld faster, but it's still meaningful in damage output and for energy refund. All of his skills, in my opinion, are worth investing to level 8 or higher, but prioritize the normal attack and the burst first for the most significant gains. For my C6 Xiao gamers though, maximize the elemental skill talent level because you'll be fully dizzy spamming it non-stop against AoE mobs. Alright, brief overview of weapons. So, Xiao actually has a relatively limited pool since his damage revolves around plunge damage, and no weapons specifically cater to this stat. This hasn't changed since 1.3 when the Lithic Spear here was released alongside his initial release. His weapon choices are focused to generic attack, crit rate, crit damage stat sticks that fit with any general main DPS. No math here, we'll leave that to the complete guide. Three star weapons. Black Tassel, White Tassel, and the Halberd are all not suitable for him, so we don't have a low cost option for budget players just starting off. For four star weapons, the three craftable options, the Prototype Star Glitter, the Crescent Pike, and not shown here, the Ketane Spear, are all not significantly valuable on him either. The Prototype Star Glitter might look valuable, but it does not increase plunge damage, which is his main source of DPS. I would say that the quote easiest to obtain DPS weapon for him is the Blacklift Pull, which still costs Star Glitter to access. If you're able to forego the DPS though, Vonius Lance at High Refinement R3 Plus is a really nice self-sustaining weapon for him. This weakens his damage by a fair bit, about 25%, but really improves his burst cycling in extended duration fights. From there, we have two other options. Lithic Spear. So this is currently unobtainable right now, but previously introduced along with Xiao's release in 1.3. For Xiao, this weapon automatically starts at one Liyue stack since he is from Liyue. And lastly, Deathmatch. This is the crit rate spear locked behind the battle pass. This is probably the most common four star weapon choice for him since it's incredibly easy to build around with the crit rate stat stick and his ascension stat being crit rate, which means that you can immediately go crit damage mass for this weapon. Now for 5 star weapons, out of the current 5 polearm choices in the game, one of which is not shown, the Vortex Vanquisher, 3 of them are solid and one is mediocre and one is don't use. So the attack static polearm that everyone has forgotten about at this point, Vortex Vanquisher. It's actually a pretty great static for Xiao, especially if running him in a Zhongli or a shielded composition. I don't have this weapon so I wouldn't be able to test it though unfortunately. Our two crit choices, Jade Spear and Staff of Homa are definitely the go-tos for Xiao Aspirers out there. Staff of Homa is just a heavy stat stick weapon, extra HP to attack conversion on top of a juicy crit damage secondary stat. Jade Spear is a scaling weapon for Xiao and reaches max effectiveness pretty early on in his burst rotation. Uh, Xiao's burst isn't a snapshot so don't worry about achieving a max stacks of this passive prior to activating. It's just an animal infusion and a normal charge plunge bonus. So those are the three I would recommend, Jade Spear, Staff of Homa, and not shown Vortex Vanquisher. So how are the Skyward Spine and the Engulfing Lightning? I would say pass on Engulfing Lightning entirely. It's a burst damage based weapon, so it's a dead stat on Xiao. Skyward Spine is a, I would say, medium stat stick for Xiao. Has a high base attack, an extra recharge from the secondary, 
8% crit rate and a slight attack speed gain. The rest of this weapon's passive does very little, even if you weave in normals between the plunder decks. Between the 4 star choices over this weapon, I would only use the Skyward if you value this recharge stat over here, otherwise the raw stats from the other weapons, DPS wise, I find more valuable. I would generally say for Xiao to prioritize the raw DPS weapons from both the 4 star and 5 star category, with the exception of the R5 Favonius Lance and maximizing team buffs for most consistent burst uptime. The R5 Favonius Lance is really good for refunding his burst, so that's why I say maximizing team buffs because that's where you can get the most balanced stuff from. On to Xiao's artifacts. This also hasn't changed since 1.3 and doesn't seem to be updating anytime soon. We don't have a dedicated Animo DPS 4 piece set. So Xiao has had to use a two-piece viridescent, two-piece attack percent set since his release. This used to be two-piece viridescent and two-piece gladiator set, which wasn't the easiest two-piece, two-piece combo to farm out. But now with the Inazuma dungeon with the emblem and Shimanawa, two-piece gladiator is interchangeable with two-piece Shimanawas as they both provide 18% attack on their two-piece set bonus. So these set bonuses of 15% animo damage and 18% attack provide Xiao with about a 15-20% to DPS increase factoring in diminishing returns, which is much less compared to the usual gains from a 4 piece set. I mention this because this makes Xiao one of those characters where the main stat and substat overpower set bonus very heavily. So if you can run all off pieces with 10 crit rate and 20 crit damage average, you'll definitely be more comfortable than running less value substat pieces but forcing the set bonus. This is different from characters like Raiden Shogun and Ayaka, for example, who gain so much from their four-piece emblem set or their four-piece blizzard set that they become much weaker without that set bonus. So try your best to aim for a two-piece viridescent and two-piece attack percent from Gladiator or Shimanawas, but don't tunnel too hard if you have some really spicy DPS pieces lying around that no one else in your team comp or party roster uses. Main stat pieces should be fairly straightforward, running a standard attack percent, animo damage bonus, and crit rate or crit damage mask. Crit damage mask if you can maintain a 60 plus crit rate ratio with a weapon like a deathmatch or jade spear. Quick crash course about constellations and how valuable the front loaded ones are for my veterans interested in potentially grabbing another constellation. So constellation 1, elemental skill can now hold 3 charges instead of 2. On top of just being more damage, Main value from this constellation is another skill proc worth of energy orbs. This is pretty nice and his most noticeably valuable constellation besides constellation 6. A plus that it's the first constellation, so it has the cheapest barrier of entry beyond C0. If you're a Xiao main willing to expend primos for high con Xiao, I would say C1 hits the worth it spot. Plus, you get another dash in the overworld. Constellation 2. Off-field recharge increases by 25%. This is a nice little quality of life thing for Xiao off-field. I would say that this is more noticeable the lower recharge you have, so between 100-120% to sees the highest gain from this, which is where I would expect most Xiao's recharge to be. Constellation 3 and 5, these are plus 3 levels of the skill and burst, nothing to say here. Constellation 4, Xiao gains 100% defense bonus when his HP falls below 50% HP. This is honestly just to help him not die in a burst form when he's lower HP. Kind of a waste of a Constellation 4, but... Whatever, it's fine. And finally, C6. When Xiao is in burst form, every time his plunge attack hits at least two opponents, he gains a skill stack, and he can spam his skill indefinitely for the next one second. Practically, this is about two to three dashes in one second. But yeah, you didn't mishear that. C6 Xiao during his burst just does a plunge dash 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 repeat until his burst is over. So in, during his entire burst rotation, you may be able to do like 20 to 30 elemental skill dashes which is probably insane for you to hear if you don't know what C6 Xiao does. The one massive downside to this is that it cannot be used against solo bosses since you need at least to hit two enemies with one plunge to activate. This may not seem that bad, but even in AoE situations when you kill off everything, if you only have one enemy, then you can't proc this. So for my wheels out there, have fun being a zoom zoom ninja with C6. When it comes to team building, Xiao can be pretty restrictive to specific supports in order to maximize his on-field DPS. As an Animo DPS with a reliance on his burst infusion, Another animal battery is highly recommended to assist with generally low refunding capabilities. Higher recharge Xiao's and or C2 won't need to rely on this as much, but still beneficial to keep in mind. And with his unique plunge playstyle, enemies can get noticeably knocked around so some form of crowd control is usually favorable to limit the annoying knockback. If planning to maximize animal damage as well, then we can attempt to make use of Geo Resonance and Zhongli's Jade Shield, which are the few natural increases and resistance stretch for Animo. Probably the safest and most popular comp for Xiao is then Xiao plus Animal Battery plus Double Geo, for example Zhongli and Albedo. Double Animal and Double Geo to maximize damage, survivability, and decent refund from the Animal Battery. The Animal Battery can be Venti Kazu Sucros for grouping or Jin Sayu for healing. Venti is highly recommended if running the grouping comp, running standard Animal DPS and not Elemental Mastery build. 
Kazuo and Sucros generally run pure elemental mastery builds to maximize their buffing kit, so they aren't as valuable here or their kit is wasted here. From this composition, a few things can be altered for more flexible slots. The second Geo can be swapped down for any off-field DPS standalone unit, like Fischl's Oz, or a buffer, like Bennett. Keeping John Lee is highly recommended for the Jade Shield Resist Shred, as well as its burst crowd control. non john Lee havers can use Diona for her shielding and emergency healing. Removing the second Animo is generally not recommended, as this makes Xiao's burst uptime a lot more fragile. But if you have no other choice, then Favonius weapon users and or standalone damage off-field supports are the best choices. Also a possibility is running Xiao plus Animal Battery and then another duo DPS pair if you can spare the resources is viable. Typically, players won't have the luxury of running two dedicated rotational DPS in one team due to resource management, team synergy, and glass cannon no survivability, but it is an option that shouldn't go overlooked. Duo DPS pair refers to something like Hu Tao Xingqiu, Ayaka Mona, or like I've shown here, Ito plus Goro. And those are my general preparation tips around Xiao. We covered Ascension stuff, weapons, artifacts, constellations, and team building. A great precursor to my complete guide. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. It's free and really supports the video and my channel. I regularly post a mixture of guides and personable content to the channel. So if you like what you see here, feel free to check out my other content. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one. Take care.